So in this tutorial here, I'd like to go over mipmaps, mipmap seams, uh, what that kind of all is about, and how to fix that problem if you if you run into it. Um, this is somewhat of an extension of my first tutorial, comprehensive texture baking, in the sense that I talked about edge padding, but I never really went into other benefits of adding extra edge padding on your meshes when you're working. Um, so we'll kind of be going over that, but. You know, you might also be kind of new to this, and you're going, well, okay, so what exactly are mitmaps uh, to begin with? And here we have a diffuse texture with the mitmaps loaded, and all really mitmaps are is reduced size versions of your original size. And so the, kind of the way this works is as you view your mesh close up, we might be viewing the full res version, but as the acid or the mesh goes further and further away from the camera, we start to load the smaller and smaller and smaller mitmaps. Now, what's the actual point of that? Um, why, why not just render this full size all the time? And there's a couple of things. First of all, it actually reduces the overall load on your machine to, you know, to render out the smaller maps instead of just continuously running the, the, uh, the full res texture all the time. And the second thing is, too, is you know, it, 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 for the most part, doesn't visually benefit the assets in your scene to render out um, the full res texture just because of the limitations of your monitor and your overall screen resolution. So for example, I could take right now and load up a 4K texture or even an 8K texture on these. And because of the distance I have these out at, they really aren't, they aren't going to visually benefit um, the assets in the scene. So hopefully that kind of makes sense and explains like why mitmaps exist kind of to begin with. But to get actually into the initial problem I have, I have two stones here. This one here I have mitmap problems with, and this one here I don't. I kind of wanted to show you a side-by-side -side of what's going on. But let's actually take a look at the material and uh, grab the texture here. And I can actually bring up the mitmaps in real time. So let me actually drop this down to a lower level, and you can kind of see what's happening here. You see that, that black edge that's showing up? And basically is what's happening is it's rendering out my viewport the negative space or the black space within the zero to one space on the texture sheet. Let me do that a couple times. You can kind of see what's going as I go from the full res version down to a lower res uh, mitmap version. And you know the reason for that in this case is because I don't have enough edge padding coming off my UV islands. Um, another way to fix this too is to actually fill the background with a similar color of what you're using. Um, with your uh, on the UV islands like okay for example like this rock filling the background with like a gray color like kind of actually I'd, how I did on this one here will help and the only reason that is because the reason for that is because everything is you know basically the same tech color and tone now if I was using if I, if I, if I were making something that had you know, reds and greens and blues and many different colors that's not going to work quite as well you'd have to actually go in and start blocking things out so one of the best ways to fix this problem here is to actually just add a lot of extra edge padding. Um, let's take a look, though, at the next one here, the one that actually doesn't have an issue, and grab that material. We'll open that up. And let me, you can kind of already see what I have, you know, the difference um, of, from the previous one. But let me drop these down. You can see I can bring it all the way down to its lowest level mitmap and everything else, and you, you don't see any black seams or anything coming up on this ever. And that's because, you know, like we were saying, for two reasons. One, I have a lot of edge padding on this one, 16 actually. And then I also colored the background. Is What I did was I grabbed the color picker and I got it like a, I think it was a 30 by 30 pixel average. And then I filled the background with that. And like I was saying, this works because everything is about the same. But if I had, you know, if this was green and this, you know, the background is, let's say, you know, this, this kind of light brown or whatever, that, you know, it's the benefit's not going to be quite there as it is like here. But let's actually go into Max real quick, and I want to show you a close-up of what's actually going on with the UVs. Um, I have, starting with this one here, let's actually take a look at the, a close-up at the, uh, the edge padding. So this green here is the edge of the seams, and if you zoom way, way in, let's look at what's, you know, it's basically what happens is it takes your, your very edge pixel, and it continues that all the way down 16 pixels out. So as those mit maps are loaded, it's still in, in this area that would have been picked up in the viewport. That's fine because we still have some color here of what was actually here on this very edge of the seam, um, you know, continuing on down. Now, another thing that, you know, I've kind of been asked a couple times was, can I have too much edge padding? 
And technically no, and technically yeah. And the reason no, in the sense that basically you're, is when you go to do your bakes, the the padding will actually cancel each other out. So let let's say I put an edge padding value of a um, hundred, right? Now, 100 pixels out from the edge of here would definitely bleed over into here. But the way the baker actually works is these two padding values that are one's going this way and one's coming this way, they'll actually cancel each other out. Um, so you don't ever have to really worry about that. But as far as just being, you know, wasted space or whatever, yeah, I mean, you could kind of go overkill on it. Um, so generally speaking, I just kind of stick with, you know, around 16 pixels out or maybe you can even you know like 24 or so with a 2k texture and then half of that with a 1024 um you know but that's kind of the general idea of you know what what this is and kind of how to uh how to avoid uh mip map seams but let's actually take a look at the other one here and uh see what i got going on with that but with this one here i do have edge padding but it's not nearly enough and you can see you know you can see or if you remember back, um, you know, when we were in Toolbag, we had mipmap seams going on. And you might think, you know, oh, I do have some edge padding, so that this is, you know, going to be okay. But even so, this isn't quite enough. Um, we got, let's see here, this is one, two, three, four, four pixels out. So that, you know, the edge padding value was set to four. And if you're wondering, too, maybe you forgot, what, what am I talking about? If I hit zero on my keyboard, it's right here. You know, um, X Normal has padding, and so does, you know, pretty much all bakers do. But right now, the default in Max is 2. Generally speaking, you know, you're going to want to set that to like 16, or you could, you know, run it at 24, or kind of whatever you're comfortable with. But at least keeping, keeping it around these values, in the, in, for most cases, will, will help um, avoid that, um, that mipmap scene issue that we saw earlier. Okay, so the workflow I was just kind of showing you was something where I actually did, already did the texturing and whatnot in ZBrush with Polypaint. And I transferred all that down onto my actual UVs in X normal. But what does it look like? What does the workflow look like if I'm not doing all that? You know, and like the reason I'm kind of bringing this up is, you know, like I was showing you before, these already had, you know, these, these colors and whatnot streaming off there, the individual pixels. But what does it look like if you're doing your, just your base block out rendering, which, you know, is a pretty common workflow in something we, we do quite often. But it's what I'll do is we'll actually do a quick uh, diffuse bake on this, kind of show you, you know, what that, that workflow looks like. But let me grab, like, kind of a, oh, we'll go with, like, a grayish blue here. And we'll assign that to selected. And that should be good for that. Um, we'll bring up our render texture dialog box. I'll keep that at 16 pixels. And um, this should be pretty good here. We'll make sure that I'll overwrite that, and that's okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, let me actually bring this in on the actual material here. And then we'll open up the UV editor, and I'll kind of show you what the actual block out and how the edge padding works on here. But you can see, you know, instead of having those individual stream um, uh, pixels that were coming off the actual bake textures from ZBrush. You know, we just have our, our block color, and this is kind of where you you would, you're going to actually start, you know, coming off in Photoshop. So if I were to bring this into Photoshop and actually start texturing on this, you know, you already have your edge padding already set up. So I, you know, I, I it's I know that's kind of obvious, but I thought I'd just give you two examples of two op, you know, two possible workflows and kind of what to expect. But you know, when you bring this into Photoshop and you see these kind of all kind of merged or um, uh, uh, brought together like that, that you know that's kind of a normal thing that th what to look for. But um, generally speaking, you know that's that's kind of overall the the stuff I wanted to talk about th and with this um, with this tutorial. It's just a, a comparison of you know a couple of meshes with um, oops with mipmap problems and uh, one without, and just kind of how to fix that problem and what to look for with that. Once again, uh, my name is Justin Dewey. Thanks for watching my tutorial, and I hope you got some useful information of it. We'll see you.